How are strategic investors like you with enough foresight to know that the markets, real estate, and the dollar are in trouble? Well, how do you protect your wealth in a way that furthers your independence and identifies opportunities and continues to sustain your lifestyle and your standard of living through a financial collapse? That is the big question. And our research will give you the answer. going to answer some frequently asked questions about homes and mortgages and I'm also going to show you some opportunities that present with real estate. So we've taken the five most frequently asked questions which are should I pay off my mortgage now or wait until after the reset? Should I buy a house now or wait until after the reset? Should I sell my house now and rent and wait for real estate to crash and then buy? Also, what happens to my mortgage and to any home equity loans when the poopy hits the fan? And finally, are we better off making extra payments to reduce our mortgage now or just stack gold and silver and pay that off later? So what all of those questions are really asking me, the big question, is how can I sustain my standard of living through the reset? I am going to show you the data and then I'm going to tell you the choices that I've made regarding those questions for myself based on this data. So let's begin. First, I'm going to start and I'm going to use Mexico in the mid 90s when they had their currency crisis because there was really great data on how they got you to restructure your mortgage. Now, remember, they officially did a devaluation in 94, but you can certainly see that these are uh, delinquency rates on mortgages where they had already started to grow pretty substantially percentage-wise prior to that. So then in April, they, they created the UDI, which is an indexed, that's why in this country, we started talking about indexing gains. They created this unit of account, an inflation indexed unit, to restructure existing loans because they wanted to ensure lenders a rate of return greater than inflation. Because obviously we all know that what inflation really does is it eats away at your principal even though nominally the numbers don't change. But the value certainly does. That also pushes interest rates higher at that same time to compensate for the erosion in principle. So here we have as the currency gets reset. Here we have what they did after that and then this is looking at that, it's a Harvard study, uh, looking at what happened afterwards to mortgages because they're saying that this program is voluntary. So that's how they're going to structure it. They're going to make it voluntary. But as we all learned from what happened with mortgages and all the restructurings in 2008 that happened in this in the U.S. and also globally but in the U.S. that those restructurings were really about postponing defaults. So to summarize really what we're looking at, at the time of the restructuring, most borrowers were faced with signing new loan contracts for amounts significantly higher than their original loans. In fact, amounts greater than the value of their homes because now they're indexed. Borrowers were reluctant to restructure because the payments changed on a monthly basis in nominal terms because now this new unit of account, the UDI, was, was um, indexed to inflation. So who know what, knew what their payments were going to be uh, happening? Well, they knew they were going up. And so a lot of people continued to default. So what do you think that did to 
prices and also to real estate. Let's take a look. So there's your restructuring, people. Okay. Well, one thing that it did was it made interest rates spike. That means that any variable rate debt, and I know we're talking specific to real estate and mortgages, but any variable rate mortgages or variable rate home equity loans are going to be in jeopardy first because they're going to reset more rapidly as interest rates rise. The fixed rate mortgages will reset as we just saw. They d certainly did reset them, but they couldn't do it instantly because they were under contract. So there was a little block of time that, that they had to pay that mortgage off before it restructured. And that's part of the strategy that we use here at ITM Trading. It's a repeatable pattern. So that's what happens to interest rates. Now using Japan, because interestingly enough, I couldn't find any graphs on uh, what happened to Mexican real estate during this period of time. I found data on it, but just not the graphs. However, it all looks the same. So let's look at J what happened in Japan um, near that same period with their real estate bubble. And you can see that prices implode because there's a ton of inventory that comes on. So when you stop to think about all of the leverage that's out there in all of this um, in all of this real estate. If it's leveraged to the hilt and people do not have the tools to pay it off before it gets restructured, or if they do restructure it, and then those payments start going up on a monthly basis, all that real estate's coming back on the market. And so, of course, you're going to see even the prices in nominal terms start to plummet even as the currency is losing value. Now, if you're holding it as a, a tenant or as a landlord rather, or for investment, this is not a good thing, okay? But everybody's gotta have a place to live and I want you to understand that too. But let's go back to those questions for a minute because the overall big question is how can I sustain my standard of living during a currency reset. And in this particular case, we're talking about your home, your mortgages, because again, you have to have a place to create a last stand. So should I pay off my mortgage now or wait until after the reset? Well, you should do whatever you think is in your best interest. But the choice that I have personally made is to carry that mortgage and stack coins, collectible coins, so that when I get the notification of a reset on my mortgage after, which typically occurs after the government has done that official reset in the uh, currency and in gold, then I will capture some of those gains in, gains in, turn, in terms of that currency and pay off my mortgage. So I personally am not rushing to pay off my fixed rate debt. And you need to understand, I do not have any variable rate debt. Okay, so fixed rate debt is an advantage, variable rate debt is not. So should I buy a house now or wait until after the reset? Well, you know, you gotta have roof over your head. And if that's where you're choosing to make your last stand, because you can generate food, water, energy, security, and community. The gold and the silver will give you that barter ability and that wealth preservation. If you are doing it to create a last stand so you can provide those things for your family, I can't tell you the moment that it's going to become visible to everybody, but I will tell you this, I'm really glad that I put my food trees in most of them because it takes a while for them to produce food. There's no time like the present if that's what you need. If, however, it's for speculation, personally, I want to buy low because my personal preference is to have the lion's share of my wealth 
in an undervalued or fairly valued asset that is in a long-term positive trend and the least amount of my wealth in an overvalued instrument like in this country, the dollar, that is in a long-term negative trend. Should I sell my house and rent until real estate crashes and then buy? Well, you know, again, it's about educated choices. Uh, it is highly likely that when the hyperinflation kicks in, that governments around the world, like we've seen them do over and over again, will go in and create limitations, which could you give you as a renter some level of opportunity uh, because of the price is fixed and the currency is losing value, well, then it's just cheaper and cheaper and cheaper for you to rent. Having said that, the inability to create that food, water, energy, and security and community might be an issue for you. Or in addition to that, we don't really know what's going to happen with rents. But what we do know is that until the government puts in those places, those rents can go up quite quickly. So, you know, that's an individual thing. And that's why, you know, here at ITM Trading, everybody has been trained in the strategy that I developed just based upon these repeatable patterns. So that's an individual thing. If you need somebody to bounce it off with, Call one of our precious metals consultants. They'll help you walk through it so that you can make an educated choice regarding that. What happens to my mortgage and or home equity loan when the poopy hits the fan? If it is a variable rate, you want to get it converted to fixed rate if at all possible. If you cannot get it uh, set to a fixed rate, any variable rate debt, you want to get that paid off before we go into a massive spike in inflation and in interest rates. So that's why I look at bonds all the time and I really follow that quite closely. Honestly, I think that there's danger up around somewhere north of 3% to 4%. That's kind of what I'm looking at where once we go above three and we really start to head to test that four, you know, you might wanna accelerate getting any variable rate debt paid off. Variable rate debt during these periods of time is dangerous. You will never, ever, 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 ever get out of that debt. If, however, it's fixed rate, well, then we're going back to the strategy about buying low, selling high, and executing the rest of it. Are we better off making extra payments to reduce the term or just stack gold and silver to pay it off that way. That is the choice that I've made because I know that right now the dollars are overvalued. Central banks say we need inflation. They're taking the dollar down. So why use those overvalued dollars to pay off that real estate when you can do it with dollars that have zero value? I mean, now, yeah, we have less than four cents, but that's still more than zero. You have to see what really supports your goal. And so overall, the big answer is that by recognizing these patterns that always repeat, even though I can't guarantee what's going to happen tomorrow, I kind of feel like if something's happened 100% of the time and we're doing the same thing and we're actually most likely to get the same results, so ask yourself, what if I'm right and what if I'm wrong? If you remain in fiat and nothing obvious happens, then, and the central banks can pull off that 2% target, inflation target every year, then you just keep losing that value slowly even though you don't realize it. If you're wrong, that value gets lost quite rapidly in a fiery hyperinflationary event. Either way, your principal is you're losing. The only difference is the speed of that loss. So therefore, what you really want to do is define those goals in context of what is the most likely outcome create that strategy and 
execute that strategy as soon as we can. And that plan needs to be very, very holistic. You need to be able to maintain that shelter, but you know, food, water, energy, security, community, barterability, wealth preservation, get it done. Look at where you're the most vulnerable. Give us a call. We're here. Our mission is to help you through this. And until next week, please, please be safe out there. And keep in mind that shields are made of metal, not promises or paper. Bye-bye.